Tony here bringing you Showreel. Today on Showreel, we are lucky enough to be joined by veteran actor Graham K. Furness. He has worked ex extensively on film, television and live theatre in both Australia and the UK. And he's here today to share us with some of his insight and experiences. Welcome to the show, Graham. Hi, Lauren, and uh, hi, Tony. Hello. <laughs> okay, so tell us, um, so what first got you interested in acting? Um, well, I was about five years old, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the teachers realised I was a little bit of a sort of a extrovert, wanted to be up on the stage type of character, and uh, little did I know I wanted to be an actor, and they sort of got me into the sort of the school theatres and plays and so on. And um, by the time I was about eight, I got cast as uh, Ali Barber in The Forty Thieves, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is for me. I was into sport as well, yeah. swimming and tennis and whatever, but I really liked... I mean, I, I became a, a muso and an actor. My brother was a fisherman and a surfer, completely different, you know. And um, I was interested, amazingly enough, in, in, in sort of movies when I was eight, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. And used to go to see these movies, mm -hmm. uh, which were probably adult movies at the time, because from a military family, as a military kid, we moved every two years. I was overseas. I remember we were living in Germany, and I was about eight, nine years old, going down to the movies to see some film. And um, it was like a Sidney Poitier film or something. And I really thought, oh, I love this and I like it. And I was, you know, really passionate and, and basically got into school plays and acting. Do you think moving around a lot, um, you know, affected your acting at all? Like, did it... Without did it a doubt, if you ask anybody in the world, if, if they're from the United States, from UK, mm -hmm. um, from Australia, if you're like a military kid, mm -hmm. it, it, it forms your, your uh, character, your personality. You, you, even when I used to come back from overseas to, 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 to the schools in like UK, they knew, you, you know, you're more confident, you're extrovert, you're out there, and you oh, military kid, you know. And it, it has it, it positive and it's negatives, you know. But it did, it, it, it created that confidence in me, I think, yeah. Mm. Before you were an actor, you started as a model. So mm -hmm. what was that process like getting into it and how did you, did you enjoy it a lot? Well, I, as I said, I was a swimmer. I was doing competitive swimming. I yeah. backed basically from about eight, age of eight until the age of 23 because yeah. I was in the military later on. Yeah. Um, and when I was about sort of 14, 15 or so, I was tall, mm -hmm. six foot one, six foot two in my era in the 60s was big, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. kids are born that, yeah. that size these days. You know? <laughs> And somebody says, oh, you know, you look tall and slim and trim, you should try some modeling. Cut a long story short, I got this agent that um, got me into sort of photographic modeling and I did this sort of like holiday camp sort of swimwear type things at 14 and at 16. And then I basically got an agent in London, I was 18, and I started doing catalogues. Back in those days, people used to get a catalogue and pick shoes and clothes mm -hmm. and order them through the post, like now you do on the net, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I did catalogue stuff, and uh, George Lazenby, Roger Moore were doing it at the time. This was the late 60s, 68, you know. So it's quite good, like catwalk modelling, and I quite enjoyed it. And of course, I was trying to get into acting. I did workshops and stuff in London, mm -hmm. but I was too young and sort of pretty and sort of nice in those. They said, come back when you're ugly and more horrible, mate, you know. So, <laughs> but it was always, you know, yeah. it was always there. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there anyone, Graham, that you would have, you would love to work with, or love to have worked with? Love to have worked with. Well, I mean, there's so many characters. I mean, like Brando, and you'd have liked to work with Brando, and of course, at the moment, De Niro. Like mm -hmm. to work with De Niro, obviously. Um, and um, one of my, uh, one of the characters that I really loved back then, who's not with us anymore, unfortunately, Peter Sellers, because he did all these different characters, mm -hmm. you know, Doctor Strange, Love, The Party, yeah. Clouseau, you know. Mm -hmm. And I love doing characters and different sort of, don't be clever dicky with me at the party today, what, what <laughs> do you want, you know. And of course, there's Sean, you know, who's got his uh, Russian sort of accent when he's uh, a submarine captain, you know, Scottish, no, no, I'm Russian. It's a bit sunny here today, you know. <laughs> so there's it's great characters around yeah. Connery, De Niro, yeah. Yeah. Brando from the past, mm -hmm. and so on. So, um, what, yeah, what was it like being the first time on camera, like the big screen, like we have lights, cameras, action, when you finally got to the next stage? Well, it's funny to say that because I remember when I was about 18 in London, I did this workshop. And of course, I was very out, out, uh, extrovert and confident, and all the guys was always oh, good. And, yeah. and I got in front of the camera, and I sort of whoo, scared to death. <laughs> and they said to me, "Oh, surprise are you, Graham, that you sort of froze and whatever." Yeah. So you know, it, it took a bit of learning, even even back then. It didn't come naturally. Yeah. 
Um, but it, it's great. I love it. And um, but a lot of people think they can be an actors or want to get out there and are confident. Mm. Once you get in front of the the, the crew and they, they they freeze and whatever, mm. it doesn't wouldn't happen to me now. But mm. I remember I was about mm. eighteen and I was sort of wasn't as confident as I'd like to have been. Mm. But that's the apprenticeship. Yep. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you're very confident now and obviously a veteran actor. You must have some funny stories from your past. Can you give us any classics that have happened on set or, you know, Funny stories. There's so many. What I, there's one, actually, which is poignant in a way. I was on, um, I was cast down the Gold Coast in the mid-90s with um, um, Heath Ledger, who's unfortunately not with mm -hmm. us anymore. He was doing a TV series called Raw. Yep. Now, I was in the... Um, uh, the makeup is a 50 worder, you know, it's quite a good little role. And I was playing a sort of a, a Roman sort of landowner guy. Mm -hmm. And of course, they never had tashes in those days. And it's funny, you're not going to believe this, but that actual episode is called Tash. Can you believe it? <laughs> you know, strange. Fitting. Yeah. yeah. And I was okay. like this, um, I was this um, uh, rich landowner that was bidding for these sort of like two kids in, in, in the auctions, you know. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, one of the kids who was about 13 at the time was Beck Cartwright, who's now married to Leighton yeah. Hewitt. Yeah. She was like a kid away. back then. Yeah. And um, I was with, uh, Le uh, I was with um, Heath Ledger. Yep. It was just he and I, about half an hour in the, in the, in the makeup caravan. Yep. And um, we're chatting, laughing, joking. He was having a tattoo put across here, like a band, you know. And I was in there being made up, you know, sort of. And um, they were going to take my moustache off. And uh, he was laughing and joking. I said, oh, I might get away with this. 30 seconds before we were going to go, oh, Graham, zit, zit. And off they took it. He was, oh, Heath Ledger loved it. He was in tears. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's quite a good and funny story, you know, I think. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, you've obviously had a long career and stuff. You've had many stories. But, you know, like, what are you working on now? Like, you know, as I've had project? a good little spin, actually, for the last sort of six, nine mm -hmm. months. I've just done a great film, um, Joel Devray, uh, Matt Murphy film. Uh, which was going to be called um, Tickets from Van Morrison. It's now called Goodbye Tiger with uh, Jenna Chanel Hayes. And I played, she's the lead, and I played the father of her in this movie. It's going to be a really good movie. It's a true story. She's got a heart problem, he's got cancer. And the whole movie is about, oh, is he going to die? And, and who dies? And it's, it's going to be great. I love doing that. It's a feature. Just done a Paul Day Angel Studio movie called uh, Beyond Redemption, the Space Captain. I played the Doctor, a bit Star Trek y. Um, and also um, Matthew Dixon. Um, Dark Cell production, goes to Victoria Park, mm -hmm. um, and um, Absolution I'm doing. In fact, I'm going for rehearsals tonight, and that's like a rip-off of Jaws. It's basically yeah. the Jaws movie, and I'm playing the Robert Shaw type character yeah, yeah. in that. So it's been really good yeah. at the moment. Stuff, you know, coming up, excellent. Mm -hmm. All features, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you've done everything. You've done a bit of theatre, film, mm -hmm. modelling. What do you like the best? Well, I've just done th theatre recently, actually, in the World Theatre Festival, in the, um, down the Powerhouse. Mm -hmm. That was three days. Excellent, you know. So I love theatre. All actors love theatre. I love both. Well, Graham, you've had amazing experiences and a brilliant actor, obviously. Um, thank you so much for coming in today. And we'll be right back after the break with more Showreel. Don't go away. In this segment, we talk about the latest news in rumours in Hollywood. And once again joining us is Graham. So first of all, guys, um, Director James Cameron, he's just announced Avatar sequels in 2014 and 15, and he's going to film them back to back. So what do you think about Avatar, more sequels? Well, how long does a movie like Avatar take to make? You know, they've got all the computer generated yeah. images and... Well, I'd imagine with the sequels, it'd be a lot quicker to make. They've mastered the 3D technology, they've got all the actors and stuff and everything sorted. So, I don't know, I think they've got a good plan already set. Have you, are you a fan of Avatar? No. Oh. Who's not a fan of Avatar? I, I love um, Avatar. Who's the? Um, uh, we all like CGI yep. and Cameron, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, and Sam was in it. Who I met on uh, Getting Square. Actually, had a small role in Getting Square with Sam. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, I'm just waiting for the call. You know, I mean, <laughs> am I getting cast on Avatar two and three? Come on, Mr. Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. It's good, and uh, I yeah. think it'll it'll again yeah. be. Yeah. Very well uh, looked at by the. Wasn't it the biggest film ever? Yeah, 2.7 yeah. billion. That's right, biggest yeah. ever. Wasn't as it? long as he has a different storyline, not rip off Fern Gully or, you know, last time. Oh, no, Samuel. they've got to have a different story. Yeah, the they can't, time. can't keep yeah, milking it. I think the mining company might want to come back yeah. and get their own back. More unobtainium. I think, yeah, I think that might happen. <laughs> and do we think they are going to be as big as the first one? I don't know if it'll make as much money, but they'll still be the interest, I reckon. Oh, I think it'll make yeah. money. I don't yeah. think it'll get the. 2.7 billion. Yeah. Yeah. It'll do well. Yeah. And so, guys, uh, looking at the three big movies that are coming up, Brad Pitt's troubled zombie epic, The mm -hmm. World War Z, yeah. and Johnny Depp's Lone Ranger, and Will Smith in After Earth, yeah. apparently these movies aren't going to do so well. Um, oh, what do we reckon, guys? Will Smith is 
he only does blockbusters. He's brilliant. Mm. I think Will. I mean, Will is now bringing his his son. You know, his son. I think yeah. his yeah. son's going to be bigger than him. Yeah. Will is now out there thinking, well, this is a vehicle for me to get my son in and put him out. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. But it'll be good. Will Smith. I'm a fan, and he's yeah. got big fans. I think it'll yeah. do well. You know, I'm, I'm not sure about Brad and the, you know a few mm. others. Not sure about it. <laughs> yeah, because I know this. The like Brad Pitt's one. It's based off a graphic novel, so I don't know. It's it must have like some established fan base to follow it, but I don't it will have. Yeah, yeah. But these like um, you know, other ones, you know, the Lone Ranger. I'm not sure if that's based off material because you notice these days Hollywood just adapts what's already yeah. been successful before. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if these big stars, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see if it'll be successful or not. Mm. I don't know, they, but they'll look all right. But um, actually, the third, which brings me to my third news um, segment. Um, Star Wars Episode Seven. That film's 2014. J.J. Um, um, Abrams directing it, and the writer Willie, um, Michael Arndt. He's the man who wrote Toy Story Three. He's mm -hmm. doing the writing. What do mm -hmm. you think about that one? Well, believe it or not, I got called up in 1977 for extras in Star Wars in London. My mate got on it. Wow. If you remember the scene of the bar scene with all the crazy yeah, animals, yeah. the yep, ugly the guy behind the bar is a mate of mine. Mm -hmm. And I actually, at the time, thought, oh, I've got something else. I didn't go down. Regret that. Star Wars. So that's got a big fan base. That'll do well. Yep. So this, I think that, that'll, you know, yep. that's going to be good. Well, guys, we've run out of time, but make sure you catch us after the break on Showreel. <laughs> Welcome back to Showreel. We have a big winter ahead of us at the box office with a huge slate of blockbusters due to hit our cinema screens in the next couple of months. So we thought we'd take a look at the upcoming trailers for next month to see what's hot and what's not. Well, it's the season for sequels with Hangover Part 3, Monsters University, Fast and Furious 6 and Despicable Me 2 all due for a, an upcoming release. But we also have a, a number of new action flicks and comedies to keep us entertained. I'm going to start talking about one of my favourites, guys, Hangover 3. The Wolfpack is back mm -hmm. and led by the gorgeous Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. What do we reckon? Guaranteed mm -hmm. a few laughs? Well, I don't know. Hopefully this one will be a lot better than the second one. I noticed the second one was just a complete utter repeat of the first one, only change it to Thailand in the settings. So they really have to sort of spice up you know, the plot and formula with this one. So I don't know, if they can do that, maybe it can be good. Otherwise, they're just milking the cow with the same plot with the hangover. Yep. I feel like it still could be good, though. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, the first and second ones were still quite popular. Mm. Like, um, mm. As long as you see more decent. Mr. Chow, the, um, played by the Korean actor, yeah. I think it'll be really good. If, I don't, have you seen The Hangover? It is hilarious. It's yeah. very funny, and mm -hmm. I like that sort of dry humour comedy and yeah. joke. So I think it'll do well, because it's got a following again. Mm -hmm. It is, it is good. It's yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I think it's, they say it might be the last one, you know, because you know, they, they don't want to go too much. They planned it as a trilogy, so maybe they'll just go all out with this last one, I'd imagine. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yep. Okay, the next one is Fast and Furious 6. So, <laughs> this is the sixth <laughs> installment in a, a franchise that was started back in 2001. Personally, for me, they're a bit of my guilty pleasures. I love these race car films, and they've actually managed to sort of diversify the plots. At first, they started as like some street racing films, but now they're real like um, heist movies. So they've changed the formula up, and you can't go wrong with you know Vin Diesel and The Rock and all. Mm. What about you? <laughs> no, not for you. <laughs> I, I tell you what, the only reason that I'd be going to see it is to see Dwayne Johnson and um, Vin Diesel. Mm. I'm, I don't know how many more cars and engines that they can put in one of those movies there's, it just starts to look the same there's six oh, there's too many guys That's movie engines many. greased oil cars racing it's, yeah. it's it's a guy's movie i mean the girls go there for the rock and the yeah. diesel and the yeah. muscles but it's, it, it'll do well yeah. again i think yeah it'll, it'll get his market they use tanks now like if you look in the trailer they just <laughs> they somehow hijack a tank and crush everything on the highway oh. and they get a car that smashes through a 747 Boeing jet so you can tell they're going <laughs> all out. <laughs> I think they're grabbing at straws, is grabbing mm. anything with an mm. engine that's loud and big. Mm. And but they've already planned a seventh one because they already predicted this one will smash the box office, like for mm. Universal Studios. So I think there's a lot of gas in the tank, no pun intended. So <laughs> I don't know, it'll oh. be interesting with this one, I reckon. But I'm excited, yes. Yep. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Monsters University. So we've got another Disney Pixar film. Yep. Bit of a family favourite. Yep. Um, I have to say, I, I do love these sort of films. Mm. I think they're great for the kids and they have all these like adult jokes 
tied into the script. I think they're clever and they're just easy to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like these Disney Pixar films, they can relate yet yeah, to kids and adults, but they got a lot of adult themes in them, but there's mm -hmm. just a lot of comedy in there mixed into there. And they're just so, such unforgettable characters, especially like with this Monsters University, you got Mike and Sully back. The big one, Billy Crystal and John Goodman. Mm. Yeah. It'd be good to see their voices back. But it's interesting, this, this time it's a prequel. So they're not going forward in the storyline, they're going okay. back. So mm. it'd be interesting to see how these characters meet up together for the first time. Yeah. And then it's, it's also becoming a big trend, I've noticed, with Pixar films. They're doing more and more sequels. First they did Cars, a sequel which was rubbish. Now they're doing this. Mm -hmm. and they're going to be doing another Nemo sequel called mm -hmm. Finding Dory. Oh. Bell and DeGeneres. But... I'm excited for this one. Would you? What about you, Graham? Well, again, they, they've got their market and they've got yeah. their fans and their, mm -hmm. their fan base and mm -hmm. uh, the families, the kids and grown-ups mm -hmm. and the characters and the actors that do the voiceovers. Yep. I, I love them. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a change as well, you yeah. know, from Fast and Furious and the yeah. real yeah. The, the, the comedy <laughs> yeah. and the cartoon. Yeah. It's it's a great. Mm -hmm. it, it's got its market. It'll do well, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. It's been like twelve. It was two thousand and one. They did Monsters Inc. So this is twelve years. A difference. So I think. Do you think it'll still do good money despite the long gap, or do you think the market's still no, strong? No, I think I think they will uh, get a good budget and they, they'll make money on that, and perhaps even do another one because they've got the, the fan base there. I think mm -hmm. it'll do well. Yeah, they'll, they'll make. They wouldn't even think about doing it if they didn't think they were exactly. going to make money. Believe me. Yeah, they're money makers. <laughs> it is. I do business. find it interesting that they've done a prequel. Yeah, yeah. You know, how did they decide that they were mm -hmm. going to because go before the story yeah. of the monsters? Because so with prequels, like you already know the outcome. Like you know, they're going to survive because mm -hmm. they in the next one so I don't know they probably have to really diversify it within the prequel just to make things interesting but I think it'll be good now the next one is the internship now this film reunites Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson these two were in wedding crashes I'm sure you guys have seen it mm -hmm. and basically these two guys are 30 year old salesmen and they get internships at Google and they're mixing in with Gen Y guys and I've seen the trailer for it, it it looks pretty funny, but I don't know. It's not something I would see, but like it's got good jokes and all. I don't know. What, what would you guys? Great. Well, look, let's be fair about it. Mm -hmm. Mixing Gen Y, Gen mm -hmm. X, mm -hmm. uh, baby boomers, mm -hmm. grey nomads, the mixture, mm -hmm. the match, and it's going to be great because mm -hmm. it's all IT and it's all we know, mm -hmm. you don't. Or, mm -hmm. I think it'd be great. Mm -hmm. It's real life, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. seeing the differences in yeah. technology and the, you know, the old people not quite understanding slang and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh -huh. yeah. I, and I love Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. Yeah. I know sometimes they can be a little bit cheesy, yeah, but I, I, think. I would see, yeah. see that and think, yeah, I'd like to go watch that. Yeah. Has Owen had his nose done yet? Or no, he's still got a bit of the crook. <laughs> mate, I don't character. Yeah. That's yeah. character. But he's, he's a particular character yeah. that, that lends yeah. itself to this role in this sort of movie. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine him mm -hmm. vying against a sort of a Y gen. Can you imagine mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'd probably smack around the ear all. And Chris, he's so, you know, he's used to being the lovable, like the womanizer sort of sleazy bit. It'll be funny going up against the love his niche. I tell you, it'll have a niche. He's having a niche and people are going to see it. But with this, I don't know, for me, like the trailers look, like the trailer look really funny and all, but I don't know if I would see it again because, I mean, Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, I don't know, they're just sort of not my cup of tea. And I prefer Vince Vaughn as a villain. If you see some of his films, he plays a better bad guy than a comedic actor. But I don't know, it, you know, who knows how the critics will like this. We'll have to wait and see for that one. Well, down, at the end of the day, it's down to the public, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Critics will give it, but yeah. the public, as you yeah, say, yeah. The, the money. It'll, I think yeah. it'll, the public will love it, it yeah. irrespective of the critics. It'll yeah, do well. it's true. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it's got a bit more to the movie that it's not just the big mm. names and the and the yeah. one-liners. Yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. it. You see, a lot of these movies, oh, yeah. we can't make this as we yeah. have a big name in it, yeah. and we've got to have so-and-so. So, it'll do. It'll do well because I, uh, yeah. I think so. Well, speaking of big names, um, this After Earth that's coming out that's starring Will Smith and his son Jaden Smith. Mm -hmm. um, I reckon this is going to be. I reckon it'll be good. Mm. Uh, Will Smith always brings out. Mm. See, I like Will Smith, but the problem is there's two things that are um, sort of preventing me from seeing it. A, he keeps shoving his son down our, our throat all the time, <laughs> so seeing him again bad act, in a bad acting role, I don't know. And secondly, the director, M. Night Shea Milan, he's a, they, they know him as the one-trick pony. He did The Sixth Scent, and all his other movies have been crap since then. They just all have ridiculous twists, like Lady in the Water and, uh, and uh. Signs and also I don't know about this one. It looks too much like Oblivion, I find. But I don't know, we'll, we'll see once again if this will be a hit or not. 
Well, I mentioned it earlier. Mm. Uh, I mentioned again that I'm a fan of Will Smith. And as I say, he's using his vehicles. He's getting his son in. I think his son's good. Mm -hmm. You know, you, he's, what he does there is not, not easy. And he's yeah. a young kid and he's doing well. Mm -hmm. So I think that, again, the Will Smith fans, and, oh, I think, and it'll probably be a good movie. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll see it. I think mm -hmm. it'll be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the upcoming Winter Slate certainly offers a range of films and genres to keep most moviegoers entertained. We'll have to wait and see how they fare at the box office. But for the most part... It looks like we've got a lot of good films to look forward to. That's it for today, guys. Catch up with us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And make sure you catch us here next week on Showreel. Showreel.